right now on Upfront. Transportation turmoil. We're pressing the airlines to do their part. Tens of millions traveling this holiday weekend, growing tension between the airline industry and the Biden administration. New rules, lawsuits, all amidst a busy summer travel season ahead. They're arguing this is outside the administration's authority. Our guest this Sunday, Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Flaw in the law. You said it's a loophole in the law. I believe it's a, a, a loophole in the law. Demands for change this weekend at the Capitol, an investigation exposing how unlicensed drivers are still on the road. That seems backwards to me as a guy outside looking in. Now the demands, the investigation moments away. Verdict watch. A sham, a disgrace to America. Closing arguments in former President Donald Trump's hush money trial 48 hours away. New polling this weekend in Wisconsin. The race for president heating up in the Badger State in the midst of it all. This insanity cannot stand. ABC News political director Rick Klein with what will be a wild week ahead. This is Upfront with Jaron Jordan and political director Matt Smith. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a nice Memorial Day weekend. Tens of millions of travelers this holiday weekend traveling amidst a growing feud between the airline industry and Biden administration. Right now, AAA projecting a record nearly 44 million Americans travel this weekend, kicking off the unofficial start of summer. That includes a spike at the airports, a projected three and a half million people traveling by air, a 9% jump from 2019. All this is the Biden administration is promising those new rules, forcing airlines to disclose certain fees. Pete Buttigieg is the Department of Transportation Secretary. He joins us now. Secretary, welcome back to Upfront. Thank you. Appreciate thank, being back with you. Thank you for being with us in the midst of a busy Memorial Day weekend. I'm curious, what are you watching most closely and, and what are you looking at specifically with the airlines? Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, we'll have tens of millions of Americans traveling by road. Uh, the main focus there is safety. Uh, and then, as you mentioned, our airways. Uh, TSA is anticipating about 3 million passengers being screened Friday. That is a huge number. We continue to see record-breaking holiday travel. So far, we've seen real improvements in the airline's results. Last year, uh, the cancellation rate was at a 10-year low. This year, so far, it's actually even better than last year. But we want to make sure that it stays that way. We're pressing the airlines to do their part and uh, beefing up capabilities at the FAA to make sure we're doing ours. Secretary, as you just outlined, you're spending a lot of time focusing on the airlines. Some of the country's largest airlines are now suing you, the Department of Transportation, over that new rule requiring them to reveal some of their extra fees. They're arguing this is outside the administration's authority and will just cause great confusion for customers. Yeah, we're not going to back down on these passenger protections. Uh, the idea that giving customers upfront information about their uh, fees that you got to pay is, is somehow confusing. I think really disrespects passengers and consumers. Uh, we put forward a new rule saying that when an airline owes you money, it's got to be automatic. That rule was strengthened by the FAA reauthorization that President Biden just signed into law. And we believe we're very much within our authority, specific legal authority that tells us we as a department are responsible for dealing with any unfair airline practices as the foundation for the rules that we're advancing. We don't do it lightly. Uh, we go through a very intense legal process uh, but we use that legal process to defend passengers. You recently told the Washington Post that the airlines, quote, need to be punished uh, in relation to growing frustration from customers over the years. I'm curious, how far are you willing to go? How far do you want to go? And how much power do you have over this? Well, you know, our preference is not to have those problems come up in the first place. We're driving performance improvements. It's why I was so glad to see how the airlines improved again last year, for example, cancellation rates well below 2% and the best we've seen in a decade. But when there is a problem, airlines have to be held accountable. They have to respond and we have issued record tough enforcement actions in order to make sure that happens. For example, after the Southwest airline uh, meltdown, uh, we undertook an enforcement action that was a multiple of anything that had been done before. Uh, Boeing is facing uh, multiple investigations right now. Are they cooperating enough with the DOT and with federal investigators? Uh, they have been closely engaging in this process. They're definitely saying all of the right things. Uh, the, the key, of course, is to see the follow through. The FAA administrator put them on a 90-day clock, and we're coming up on the end of those 90 days when they will be responsible for presenting a comprehensive plan about how they're going to 
prevent these kinds of quality control issues from happening in the future. Uh, obviously, uh, that's a plan that there's going to be a lot of accountability around, too. So, uh, look, I, I would say we, we've seen a lot of steps in the right direction since what happened in January with that incident aboard the Alaska Airlines flight. But we're far from satisfied that, that all of the work is done. There's going to be a, a lot of work in the months and even years to come to make sure everybody can be a thousand percent certain and confident in the quality of that production coming off the line at Boeing. Yeah, I just wanted to ask about rail, uh, rail travel really quickly. This past week, Wisconsin expanded passenger rail from Chicago to St. Paul, uh, Minnesota. We know that there are more studies underway right now for more expansions, thanks in part to some funding from the infrastructure law. How realistic, though, is any new train expansion when there are such deep political divides like in a state like Wisconsin? Well, I don't think any of this should be a partisan issue in the same way that, as the saying goes, there's no such thing as a Republican pothole or a Democratic bridge. I think bipartisan cooperation is how we can get excellent passenger rail as well. We're thrilled to see this new Borealis line uh, run that connects Chicago to the Twin Cities through Wisconsin. We're also funding a number of planning efforts that would uh, introduce uh, additional connections through Eau Claire, more service for uh, uh, potentially expansions of the Hiawatha line, more for La Crosse as well. I know how much enthusiasm there is uh, for uh, so many Wisconsin communities about having better passenger rail connections. You know, railroads help make the United States into the country that it is today. And there's no reason why Americans should settle for less in terms of our quality and reliability of passenger rail compared to any other country. Uh, that's what this is really about, making sure that Americans can enjoy the highest standard of transportation, whether it's roads, bridges, uh, airports, or rail. Are you going to push Congress to continue funding this effort? There's been a lot of hesitation among Republicans here in the state in terms of state funding. Yeah, we, we definitely are urging states to make sure that they uh, do what they can to partner with us. Our, our federal dollars go a much longer way when states and local communities uh, show that they understand the importance of transportation and infrastructure. And that's how we get these big uh, wins, bipartisan, bi-state wins. I think about the uh, Blotnick Bridge up in uh, Superior and Duluth, uh, something that just would not have ha happened if it weren't for the bipartisan infrastructure law. And I, I would emphasize the word bipartisan. It's true that in Wisconsin, uh, Senator Baldwin was, uh, uh, was the only senator uh, to vote for this. But uh, we had Republicans, uh, many Republicans, come across the aisle to work with us uh, around the country to get this done, and, and, and that's what we believe in. And quickly, before you go, Secretary, we'll wrap after this. If, if President Biden wins re-election, do you anticipate staying in your post as Transportation Secretary? Uh, I don't really know what the future holds. I, I know that uh, right now doing this job has taken about 110 percent of my uh, capacity, and, uh, and I'm proud of the work that we're doing. Uh, the, the future is uh, something we'll, uh, we'll get to when we get to it. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm mostly just thinking about the future of transportation. Department of Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg. Secretary, thank you. Have a safe holiday weekend. Thank you. You too. Good being with you. Up next, calls for change at the Capitol. The investigation into unlicensed drivers still on Wisconsin roads. And now this weekend, the calls for action from lawmakers.